Thanks for being here. Thank you very much for talking to Words.ie today. You've had a hectic afternoon of interviews and media interviews and talking to real journalists and stuff. But I'm going to ask you some of the questions that our members have wanted to ask you. And I'm going to go right into Invictus and Matt Damon's portrayal of you and how accurate you think the events in Invictus are to what really happened. For example, one person uh, on the board said, it kind of glossed over the whole food poisoning incident. Another person <laughs> said, um, it didn't really show how hard you had, the, the team had struggled against France, for example. So sure. let's talk a bit about that. I think first of all, you've got to understand what the movie is about. The movie is about Mandela mm -hmm. um, and his leadership and how he helped a nation to heal itself. A uh, person that was in jail for 27 years came out and he embraced the sport that was uh, previously just played by white people in South Africa. When he was in Robben Island in prison, he actually wrote to all the rugby authorities all over the world asking them not to play against the Springboks. So the Springboks in itself was a system or a, a symbol of a partner. So you've got to contextualize it in that way. Rugby, in 1995, we um, we did something really special uh, because we wanted to win the World Cup. We trained as hard as we could. We had an unbelievable coaching staff, unbelievable coach, management team, and a great team. So we had a real chance of winning the World Cup. Uh, and Hollywood took these two elements and they made it into a movie Invictus. Hmm. So in there lies a lot of license, obviously. I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious that they're going to use a lot of license because it's almost impossible to have in an hour and a half to, to get these two to, to marry. You have to have just make one movie or the other. So there's quite a bit of a good license. Mm -hmm. To come back to your questions, um, how did I like Matt, Matt Damon portraying me? First of all, I'm incredibly privileged that an actor like Matt Damon was going to play me. There are certain scenes that I think is, he did so well um, in the movie, like the, the scene where he goes to Robben Island in the prison cell. That's almost 100% correct. I read you cried watching that with I your daughters. I, yeah. I, 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 my, my two sons. I oh, sorry, absolutely sorry. bawled my eyes. Right. I couldn't stop crying. It yeah. was unbelievable. Very emotional for me. There's certain scenes where I thought, no, please don't do it that way because that's not me. That's not my character. But, you know, he had to follow a script. He had to follow a screenplay. And uh, in, in that, I, I think it, 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 did a, it did a good job. Um, Things that they have glossed over, there's a lot that it would have been glossed over because you can't go into the fine detail. But let's get to the food poisoning thing, which is quite amazing. Because that never happened until two weeks after the Rugby World Cup final. Right. And by the way, they said, by the way, there was something wrong with the food. Now, go and ask Jonah Loma. Right. And ask him if there was anything wrong with the food, and he'll tell you it's rubbish. Okay. So, so enough said about that. No, no, no. The, the, the other thing is uh, the French game. Yes, we almost lost the French. Yes. I mean, uh, there was the arm of Abdel Benazi that separated the ball in the try line. Was, it was that close. Or we would have been maybe out of the ball. But even if you take it a step back, the French, when they played against the Scots, they were trading. Yep. Three minutes into injury time. And then Milan to Mark scored in the left-hand corner at Loftus Fairfield Stadium to take them into the semi final. The All Blacks could have won the final. You know, Andrew Merton's drop goal missed by this much. Joel Stransky's drop goal went over. And that's, that's sport for you. you know, in, in any World Cup that I've seen since 1995, it's always been about margins. About a small thing that makes a big difference. Have you been very involved since you left in 96? Have you, have you watched no, every game? Well, watched, of course. Yeah. I'm, passionate. I'm a passionate. I'm, a, I'm an adrenaline junkie. So <laughs> I watch a lot of sport. I love rugby. Um, Unfortunately, my boys also play rugby. Okay, yeah. I wanted to play another sport because rugby is, uh, you know, my body is, <laughs> is feeling the, mm. the after effects of, of, of a rugby career. No, I absolutely watch it. I was there in 2007. Um, they, they were then eight and nine. Took them, I took a, we took a sabbatical and they watched the opening match, they watched the quarterfinals in Marseille, they watched mm -hmm. both semifinals, and they watched the final in France, sitting in the studio with myself and Martin Johnson. So wow. we, we're passionate about rugby. And we will be in New Zealand for next year's Rugby World Cup. And my colleague Dave would like to know, who do you reckon for the World Cup next year? It's any, any four teams can win it. It okay. always is. You know? right. When you get to the knockout stages, yeah. any team can beat the other on the day. There's no guarantee. You know? team goes into the World Cup. I would hate to go into a World Cup as favourites. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
it, it doesn't work out that way. You can have one or two injuries, you can have one or two decisions going away. And like for instance in the Rugby World Cup, we scored a try that wasn't awarded. You know, and so it, it could have been an easier win, it wasn't. Those sort of things happen. Okay. And that's what rugby is all about. Right. Um, we got a lot of questions about the newly introduced race quotas in South African rugby. What is, what's your opinion? I understand that uh, in South African sport and South African business in general, there needs to be uh, opportunities for people that were disadvantaged in the past and couldn't participate. So um, that absolutely is, is a given. But I would like to see it on a broad base okay. scale, and that uh, you know that will filter through. In some of the some of the sports in South Africa, um, it's worked better than in other sports. Um, I just don't think if I'm an individual and I'm a black man or a coloured man for that matter, or like for instance in our cricket. Team. We have uh, Ashim Amla that's done unbelievably well in this last tour in India. I don't know if you've seen it. It was just no. amazing. Um, if people would say to me that, oh, you, you're only in the team because of your colour, but there's guys that are playing for South Africa that are there on merit. Um, and unfortunately, you know, some of the players will feel that because of the quota system in South African sport, that I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not being given the credit that, that I deserve. And that can always be. I you know, can always have, have, have the, the wrong comments. Yes, no, I, I can imagine. Um, but just to, uh, again, no with South African sport and yep. South Africa as well, we have a responsibility yes. to give everybody a chance uh, to participate in that level. Okay, how would you feel that the 1995 team would do against some of the teams today? A very good team, 95 team. You know, mm. But you, well, you would say that. <laughs> of course, yeah. of course I would say it. But if I go through the team, and, yeah. and maybe the audience and you would not know the names. No, probably not. Well, I wouldn't say that. Andre Javert was the, called the Royal Royce of Fullbacks. Uh, James Small, uh, Chester Williams, uh, Peter Hendricks, Yarpi Mulder, Henry Root, Joel Stransky, Jus van der Vestes, and Osturan that played in both World Cups. Ruben Kruger, I mean, if you go through that team, it was an awesome team. But what made that team very good is that team hated to lose. You know, that team okay. trained harder than. Team. And the basis of that team comes from the Transvaal team that were very good at 93. Okay. We won the first ever Super 10 right. against Auckland that had an all black team of Zinzenbrook, Robin Brook, Olo Brown, Craig Dowd, um, Michael Jones, um, Grant Fox, Stephen Bishop, Little, unbelievable team. And in 93, that Transvaal team won the Super 10. So the bulk of the 95 team came from the uh, Transvaal team of, that were champions in 90. 93, 94, going into 95. Um, so that was, a, that was a strong team. But the guys are so physical today. They, they are athletes, that's their job. Remember, it wasn't our job. Yes. It was, it was a hobby. Um, as a hobby, what was it like coming back to the lab and saying, um, I've just been speaking to Nelson Mandela and he would like us to win the World Cup? Well, that's Hollywood license. Yes, okay. that, that, you know, Nelson never asked us to win the World Cup. Okay. Right, that's all you would license. Okay, fair enough.